Hello and welcome to Flying Bobbins. I'm Liz and today we're going to be making this beautiful uh, fold over clutch bag. And this comes in a range of three colours and I'll be doing more designs of these. It's been so, so popular. So look out for these in 2021. Um, it's my last sew along of the year. So thank you for joining me throughout this year. Uh, if you hear noises in the background, my cat has gone crazy. She's skipping around the room, so um, please excuse. Anyway, back to the clutch bag. Um, so it's a fold over clutch. We've got a detachable wrist strap, little ribbon there on our lovely YKK metal zip. And then when you open it up, you've got a lovely lining and a little cute pocket inside, which is um, trimmed with some gold binding as well. So I've made the pink one. As you can see, I quite like pink. And um, I'm going to make the black and white one now. So I've got my sewing kit here from Flying Bobbins. And I'm going to open this now and show you what's inside. So inside my sewing kit, so this is the black and ivory version, I have got everything I need to make my clutch bag. So... You get uh, full colour instructions as well, which I haven't printed yet, but you'll get those. You get two pieces of jacquard fabric in the colour of your choice. You get two pieces of metallic gold printed cotton for the lining, and that's in dashwood swirl. You get another little piece of that for your uh, internal pocket and a piece of gold metallic binding to go at the top of your metal of your internal pocket. You get a long strip. These are all pre-cut, ready to go. So when you buy this kit, you can just sit down and get straight on with the sewing. So there you go. There's your strip for the wrist strap. A YKK metal zip. You get a little D-ring and a lobster clasp for detaching your wrist strap. And a piece of... Uh, glitter satin ribbon in gold for the zip pull and as well as your kit you're going to need your sewing machine ready to go I would suggest using a size 80 or 90 universal needle for this that's 12 or 14 the jacquard is not quite as heavy as a denim but it is a little bit heavier than your typical quilting cotton weight and um, then I would suggest winding up a bobbin with black and a bobbin with white and then having a black and white thread. We're going to use both throughout the project. Um, you're going to need your snips, your wonder clips, all your pins. Never be too far away from a picker, just in case. And then one last thing you're going to need is your zipper foot for your sewing machine. And most sewing machines should actually um, come with these as part of the kit included. If you're not sure which is your zipper foot, then have a look at your manual. On the bottom, you will see you've got two indents there so it's quite easy to identify so if you you're also going to need to your ironing board and your iron to press as we go so if you get your workstation set up make yourself a nice brew and we shall crack on with making a clutch bag first thing we're going to do is take our lobster clip and our wrist strap and looking at the wrong side of your wrist strap I need you to just fold that in half lengthwise. Now set your iron to low between silk and wool. You only ever want to press this, this uh, fabric on a fairly low heat. Don't let your iron get too hot. It will ruin it, it will make it shrink and it will spoil the gold element. So we're just going to press a crease down the centre and then I'm going to press either side into that central crease. Just keep your iron nice and cool. And on the other side, I'm going to press that crease in so that it meets in the middle. So it's the same sort of thing as if you were making a bias binding. So you're folding in half and then you're folding each outside edge into the middle. And then fold in half again and give it one last press. 
So this is how it will end up. Oh, it's hot, despite the fact it's a cool iron. The, um, this pressing mat generates a lot of heat. <laughs> it's kind of got metallic filaments in it and it um, definitely retains the heat. I've got asbestos fingers. There we are. So that's now sort of pressed so that you've got the one crease in the middle and then the two raw wedges coming in and then folded in half. So eventually your wrist strap will be as quarter, a quarter as wide as the original strip of fabric. Okay, so the next step is you get your lobster, your lobster clip, and you're just gonna, with your uh, narrow strip of fabric folded, you're just gonna push that through the um, end of your lobster clip. Okay, so just thread your lobster clip onto your pre-folded fabric. Don't worry if it comes unfolded, um, just as long as you've got your lobster clip on there, that's good. Okay, so take your strip and put it together, right sides together, raw edges matching. And then you can just put a wonder clip in there or a pin to hold it in place. Now at this stage, have a think about the length that you want your wrist strap to be. What we're going to do is we're going to sew along here and then we're going to fold it back up with those creases that we did earlier and sew all the way around to make our wrist strap. And then we just do a little line of stitching there to imprison our lobster clip. So just have a think. Uh, is that going to be a bit too long for my wrist strap? Um, I've given you the sort of quite a long piece, so you might think to yourself, actually, I just want to make that wrist strap a little bit shorter, um, or it might be about the right length for you. But just kind of think to yourself if that's about right. I might just come in a little bit. So once you've matched up those raw edges, we're just going to sew along here, trim away the excess, press that open, and then we're going to finish off by top stitching all the way around our wrist strap. Here I am ready to sew, and I'm actually going to use the edge of that gold stripe as my guide. I think that's going to be about the right size for me, and then I'll trim down the extra um, later on. Once that foot's down, you can remove that clip because that fabric's now anchored in place. And I'm just using a normal everyday straight stitch, a length of 2.4. And then a little back stitch at the beginning, and if I go, and thread it up with my black thread, back stitch at the end, and I'm done. There you are. So I'm going to cut the excess off of there and press that open and flat to reduce any bulk at that point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold back in and in half and where you'll see me is there's going to be a fair bit of bulk but don't worry you're just going to take it slow over that point and I'm just going to go around and because I pressed this before attaching the lobster clip the fabric hopefully will want to um, behave itself and fold in on itself like that. Now if it doesn't you can take it back over to that lining board. It is quite a springy fabric um, so you might just want to give it another press um, but you're just going to go all the way around there and just secure with pins or clips like this and then what we're going to do is sew all the way around the edge and we're going to move the lobster clip out of the way as we sew I'll just slide it out of the way and then we'll slide it back on itself and this way we get a really nice neat finish on our wrist, wrist strap with no sort of visible um, joins. I end up with something that looks a bit like a strange crown made from wonder clips <laughs> but um, that's what you want so it's all folded in half all the way around and I'm now just going to sew a line down the edge there um, to sew that wrist strap in place. Um, just start somewhere away from your, your join. So there's my join there. 
Now there is a bit bulkier, so I don't want to start sewing there. I'll start sewing beyond there where it's a bit flatter and easier to manage. I'll pop that under my machine and I've increased my stitch length now to three. And I'm just going to pop that under. And I'm just going to sew, tucking in any little straggly bits, I'm just going to sew along the edge. I'm just going to do it by eye there. And I've got to come all the way around. When I get to the lobster clip, I'll just move it you know, out of the way and carry on. I can do this in one big long circle. Move my machine a bit closer. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Excuse the wobbling. Right. So, so straight stitch, length of three. I'm just doing it by eye, going along that fold. I take the clips off as I go. Make sure everything's sitting nice and flat. And you can just take your time, make any adjustments as you go. It's not a race. Slow is better sometimes with sewing anyway. <laughs> See, I've got Pam written on my hand. <laughs> I, uh, I have a parcel for Pam. She's coming to collect it and I didn't want to forget her. <laughs> so I thought I'll write Pam on Bi in Byron on the back of my hand. And then I thought, oh, I'm doing a video. That's going to look really odd. So I thought I'd explain that. <laughs> She's picking up a, some uh, goodies. And just keep moving this out of the way, just keep sliding it down. This is where having that slightly heavier needle helps as well, because you're going through four thick, four, I can't talk, four thicknesses of, um, of the folded fabric. Now, this is a good point, the, the uh, lobster clip won't go past where that seam join is. So at this stage, I just have to remove my strap, slip it backwards, out of the way. I remember doing this now when I made my first one. And then pop it back over the top of itself and stitch back on top of your stitches. Do a little back, if you're not confident about um, going on top of your stitches, then do a little back stitch to lock those in. And um, the black thread all kind of goes into the jacquard and disappears, so don't worry, you're not going to see that you've kind of stopped and started there. I remember that now, because that pesky clip, it's not quite big enough to, to manage itself over the... Um, over the bulk created by that seam. Right, now I'm coming to that big bulky seam, so I'm just gonna encourage it through. Ooh, can you see that presser foot riding over that bump? There it goes. And I'm coming back to where I started. A little back stitch to finish. I'll draw that away and then I'm gonna go back in and trim off um, all of those straggly loose thread tails, but hopefully you can see that that is your wrist strap now created with um, the lobster clip positioned there. And where you have that seamy bit, it's up to you, I just tuck it towards the other end. And then just choose which is your favourite side. So the other side is my favourite side, so I'm going to twist that over that way. There we are some sort of prettier side there. And then what I'm gonna do now, just to finish off, and this is sewing through eight layers, so it's a bit tricky, but I'm just going to sew a little tab back and forth there to keep that lobster clip imprisoned at the end there. Poor lobster, you're not going anywhere now. <laughs> so I'll just 
Now I'm going to pre press that button in on my foot because that will help it ride over. And just a few stitches forward and a few back. And forward again for good luck. And for good measure. There we are. And I need to trim off those thread tails, but that is our wrist strap. It's a nice size there, even for my little wrists. And that's uh, the wrist strap finished. <laughs>